Hello, crafters. This is Yana Smakula for SimonsSTM.com. Welcome back for another EP for Yana episode. In this video, I'm stamping a clean and simple birthday card. Here I have a panel of white cardstock. This is Nina Solar White, 80 pound, and it is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. This panel will make the front of my card. I have two stamps positioned on the door of my Misty. One reads, hello. It is from the Clean Line XL stamp set by Kathy Zilski. By the way, all the supplies I'm using today for these cards are linked and listed in the video description below. And I also have a stamp that reads, a little birdie told me, and this one comes from the Print Making Birds stamp set. I position these vertically on my panel, or rather on the door of my Misty, as I plan to stamp them this way, vertically onto my panel. Changing the orientation of the image is a great way to draw attention to it and make an impact. Stamp the same image as intended, in this case, stamp the same sentiment horizontally on your card, and it will not have nearly as impactful of a result as if you stamp it vertically. Of course, not every image or not every design can be rotated like this. It doesn't always make sense. So you can't always rotate an image to draw attention, but many images and many designs can be rotated. So next time you plan to stamp a sentiment on your card, think about how you can position it vertically like this or maybe diagonally, or maybe you can even stamp it as intended and then add a mirror impression using the mirror stamping technique. Now I used VersaFine Onyx Black ink and stamped these sentiments onto my panel. I also stamped another panel using the birthday stamp instead of the hello. Here I had to perform a stemterectomy, by the way I just made that up, to separate the words happy and birthday to be able to stamp just the birthday part. Now if you're new to stamp cutting, do not be alarmed. Just um, make sure you're not cutting the actual stamping part of the sentiment, but just the polymer in the background. This way, you'll always be able to piece your stamp back together later if you want to stamp it as intended. I combined different fonts and dramatically different font sizes, and this worked really well, particularly because of that difference in size. Had these two stamps been similar in size, they would have made a much less dramatic impact on the card. Next, I used the Printmaking Birds stamp set to stamp several colorful birds for my card. Now, I love this stamp set for all the different ways that one can use it. The birds have four layers. There is an outline layer that can be used alone or together with the other layers. Now, if you use it alone, you can color the birds in using markers or pencils or even watercolors, whatever you prefer. And as for the various layers, I love to use just two layers out of four layers. The one to add color to the body of the birds and the one to stamp the wing, the face, and the feet. Now, there is a layer to stamp the belly, but I usually skip it and I keep the, the belly white. Here I use Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Inks in Bubblegum, Citrine, and Surf to stamp the bird bodies. Next I use Charcoal to stamp the feet, face, and the wing on some of my birds, and then I used a lighter gray Earl to stamp the same image onto the yellow birds. Now you can also use black for this layer and it does work well, but sometimes it looks too stark and true, too dramatic. So gray or you know various shades of gray are a good alternative. Now with this type of stamping, the birds do look a little bit incomplete or unfinished, but I think this is the beauty of this look. You know, I really like it. I like to skip the outline and I like to skip adding the belly layer. There are coordinating dies available that will cut every single bird out, and I used mine to cut the birds. Now, I like to stamp a bunch of birds in different colors, cut a bunch of birds out, and then play with all of the different sentiments, placement options, colors, and all. 
The plan for this card design is to add several colorful birdies on the right hand side of the panel to the right of the sentiment. Now I also want to add one bird directly onto the large stamped hello. I want to ground the birds and give them something to sit on, an illusion of a branch. And the letter O gives me just that. The bird sits on the O with the little feet touching the letter A. I'm using foam adhesive to pop these birdies on my card. Now, some birds have a piece of cardstock adhered over the foam adhesive because I had first planned a slightly different card design and I had already foam mounted the, some of the birds in place. But I didn't like the result and I just cut it all apart. And sometimes that's something that you have to do. You know, you have to put a card together just to see if you like it or not. And I did not like it. Here, for example, I had a few peach birds and I didn't like them in the end. So I changed them and I used blue birds instead. But looking at the video now, I kind of like the peach birds and I wish I had kept them. Now I did the same with the birthday stamped panel. I positioned the birds in the same way and I added one bird over the word birthday. Here the bird sits on the letter D, partially covering the letter A. I also stamped three dots as if to continue the sentiment to the inside of the card and it does continue there. I first wanted to just draw dots using a black pen. That would have been a lot easier, you know, but I couldn't find a black pen in my craft room. Can you believe it? It was easier for me to find a tiny circle stamp and stamp it in black ink to imitate the dots. Next, I trimmed about one eighth of an inch off of each panel. Now, why did I do this? I wanted to bring a little bit of colored cardstock into this design, but I didn't want to cover the entire card front with colored cardstock. That would have been too much. And I could have done that, you know, I could have trimmed this panel to say four by five and a quarter inches or even three and, a, and three quarters by five inches. And I could have had a colorful background with this white panel popped on top of it. But I'm kind of tired of that design. You know, it has been used so many times. I didn't want to use it here. And I wanted to do something differently. So I planned to add a strip of colored cardstock to the bottom of my white top folding card base. Next, I used some scrap card bases that I had in my stash. And I trimmed them to about one eighth of an inch smaller than my panels. I then used double-sided adhesive and I glued the card base shut and also I adhered the card base to the bird panel from the back. Now this might seem weird, you're probably wondering why is she doing this? I like to do this for several reasons. First of all, it makes my cards more substantial. And by the way, you don't have to use like a card base. You can use scrap cardstock for this. And I do use scrap cardstock for this often. I just happen to have a bunch of these low quality card bases that I have no other use for. Now, this is great if you plan to hand deliver your card, as this is great to help the card stand on the desk. This way the card has a little, more, a little bit more weight to it and it doesn't fall down easily. Now this is not great if you want to mail your card as it might add additional weight and that might influence the price of postage. Now another benefit to doing this is it helps to pop the front panel up a little bit without adding too much bulk. Two sheets of cardstock add barely any dimension but they do add some, and in this case, that's enough to make a difference. And lastly, I love doing this because it makes my card front panel a lot thicker and sturdier. I feel it just makes my card better. If I don't add this extra layer when I'm making a card, it feels as if something is missing. That's how much I'm used to adding this secret layer. So I adhered a strip of blue cardstock to the base of my card base. And next I added my bird panel on top, revealing just a tiny bit of that blue at the bottom. And I love this pop of color. Next, I stamped the second part of the sentiment on the inside of the card. And it reads, it's your birthday. And this I forgot to mention actually is one stamp. It's, it's one stamp that's together with 
a little birdie told me it's your birthday. So the little birdie told me part was stamped on the front and it's your birthday is stamped on the inside. I also cut this stamp apart to be able to use it this way. Finally, I embellished my cards using a couple of teal gems from Spellbinders. I love how the teal on the gems goes really well together with the teal birds. Now I added the gems mostly in between the large gaps or the large bird gaps. I often tend to go overboard with the number of embellishments I add to my cards, so feel free to stop after you've added just three or five gems or, you know, go crazy like I do and add a bunch. So here's a look at the finished cards. I hope you like them. If you make a card inspired by this video, we'd love it if you shared your project online and tagged us on social media. We always enjoy seeing what you make. Thanks so much for joining me today. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.